Hi, it's Corrine. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I'm here with the Arteza Real Brush Pens. They had sent these to me a little while ago asking my opinion on them. And I have been playing with them for the last few days. I have used other Real Brush Pens before, so I have something to compare these to. And I have to say, I am in love with these pens. If after hearing my review on them and you fall in love with them as well, be sure to check the description box for a link to their website as well as a, a discount code that they offer to my subscribers. Let me just show you a little bit more about them. They also have this water brush pack. This is the six pack and it comes with small, medium, and large of the pointed brush and also the chisel. And I've used both, but my favorite is the small of the pointed one. Again, it comes in small, medium, and large. The price point on these are great. And all you do is twist off the cap and add your water in them. And they're really easy to use. They have this little push here which dispenses the water. And also the chisel, let me show you the large chisel. This one's really large. I use the smaller of the three, but this will cover a large area which I really like to have the option of. So these are great. I do um, use these in the cards that I made and I have a couple cards to share with you using these. So again, this is the 24 pack. They also come in 48 and I believe the full collection is the 96 and I love how these are stored. So I've been using them on my desk just like this. It's easy to kind of see through the colors and pick them out. And they are beautiful pigmented colors. So here I was just um, trying it out on some Bristol Smooth. I also have some Strathmore paper here, which is a little bit toothier. The Bristol Smooth, these blend beautifully on. So let's see here. I'm gonna pick out a little bit darker blue and then the lighter blue. And here is the large brush tip, which even though it's it's large, it really it's easy to get small detail out of it. Like you can really get into the small if um, corners of a stamp if you're coloring a stamp. So they're very juicy, and they blend beautifully. And I like that they show the color on both the top and the bottom, so it's easy to just pick them out. They blend really well. They also work well with water. If, if you're not using water, I would suggest using Bristol Smooth Paper. Um, it, you can even use water on that as well. So again, this is Strathmore. And you just squeeze this and the water will come out the tip there and these blend beautifully. Let me grab a paper towel here. And here's some other colors that I was trying as well. So I have to say that I'm in love with these. I love the aqua pens that come with it or that you can purchase separate I mean I love that they come with six different sizes and here's a few cards that I made using these real brush pens I also have videos of them showing if you'd like to stay tuned for that but they this is more of a watercolor look I use the chisel nib for some of the backgrounds and you can get some good blending with these I love that and then I also have this card here to share with you. Colors are absolutely beautiful. So if you're interested, there will be a link down in the description box. You can find more information on their website and I'll be sure to link to that as well. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment and give me a thumbs up and stay tuned for the start to finish on the videos. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you stop by Arteza, check out all that they have to offer. So I pulled out a few supplies for this card. I am going to be using my Misty stamping tool along with this beautiful sunflower stamp from Stampendous. 
and a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock. I'm going to put that in the Misty and ink it up with some VersaFine Black Onyx ink. This is a large stamp, so I'm going to go ahead and ink it twice to make sure I get a good impression. And this is a beautiful black ink. It, it is a very fine, um, dark black ink once it's stamped, but it does take a while to dry. So either heat it with your heat gun to help dry it, or go ahead and emboss it like I'm going to do. I love the shiny look of it. So I'm just going to set that aside, use some clear embossing ink, tap that off. And now I will take my heat gun to it, but I do make sure that my heat gun is hot and ready to go. I let it heat up before taking it to the paper and that'll minimize warping. And you also want to heat it from the back as well. Again, that will help to alleviate any of the warping from your paper. So once you see that it's all shiny and melted, you're ready to start coloring. I'm pulling out these gorgeous markers and I'm gonna pull out another piece just to swatch them out. I knew that I wanted these sunflowers to be more orange based than yellow. So I'm going to pull out some oranges that I have, the yellow as well, and then the brown for the center. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go around all my petals, lay down my base color. You can also use these with water, but you don't have to. And in this one, I really, I used very minimal water, which I'll show you here in a moment. So my second color, I went around more just around the, the center of the flower, and now I'm blending it back out with that orange. They blend beautifully. And then to the center, I'm using the brown, and I'm gonna do that on all three of the flowers. And as you can see, this these colors are very pigmented. They're, they show up beautifully and um, you can add layers of color on them. So this second and third flower I wanted to be slightly lighter so I'm starting off with my base of yellow and again going around all of them. Now I'm going to add that same orange about halfway down the petal, blend it back out with the yellow all the way to the edge of the petal and then I'm going to use that same um, sienna color and do that just around the top of the petals and then blend it back out with the orange and the yellow. Any of the petals that are tucked behind other petals I am leaving slightly darker being that there would be a shadow there. And I'm doing the exact same thing with the third flower just quickly going down laying down my base color, adding my other two colors and then blending them back out. And then I'll work my way back down with the same colors, blending it with the medium and then down to the yellow. And here I'm going to give you an up close look. If you go outside of the lines at all, I wasn't worried too much, but there were a couple of places. There was one smudge on here, which I'll give you a close up look. Right there, there's a smudge. All you have to do is take some water to it and make sure to use a clean part of your paper towel and just dab it up and any of that color will come off. So I went around any edges that I went, um, that I didn't like and dabbed it up. Here I wanted to lighten the center slightly so I'm just taking some water and using the clean part of the paper towel and dabbing it up. So you can really adjust them how you want. Choosing my greens I decided to go with more of the olive greens. I'm using a darker one and a lighter one and the darker I will put towards the top of the where the petals are and then drag down with the lighter one. These markers are really foolproof. They really are easy to work with and they're at such a great price point. So now I'm just going to put my card together um, using a craft card stock. My finished card will be four and a half by five and a half. So just slightly larger than an A2 size card. And then I'm cut, cutting down my pattern paper a quarter inch smaller. So four and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then this map piece, I didn't have a size in mind. I just wanted it to be um, the focal point on the card and make it off to the side. So you'll see me cut to the left. You'll see me cut it off slightly. I didn't want it centered. I want it to go off the side of the card slightly. Now here's where I'm measuring because I want a map piece behind this in that same craft. So I'm cutting that down accordingly. And I'm going to adhere it all down together using some ATG. I also use some Beacon Fabri-Tac here in a moment. 
because I wanted to give that focal piece a slight dimension. So I'm adding a piece of cardstock, or excuse me, chipboard behind the cardstock. And here's a little tag that I cut out from my Cameo. I'm using a stamp by Avery L. and it says Hugs. I've never used this stamp before, so I'm stamping it off a couple times on scrap piece till I get a good impression. And then I'm gonna use some American Crafts twine and tie a little bow into the tag. And after I cut it down, it had a really pretty loop in it. Um, but after I cut it down, I lost that loop. So you'll see me just kind of fray it with my scissors and it gives it that little bit of curl back to it that I wanted. So here's where I just kind of fray it just like you would some old ribbon when you're making your Christmas gifts. And now using that same Beacon Fabri-Tac, I'm adhering my main image down to my card, adding my tag that says hugs. And that was a very simple tag to do or card to do, excuse me. I did want to add a little shimmer to the center, so I'm using my Wink of Stella to the very center of the flowers. Came together very quickly. Next card, I'm going to go through this rather quickly just for the sake of the video, not to keep it too long. I'm using some Strathmore watercolor paper, and I did mask off the little hippo in the center because I wanted him to be in front slightly. And I, I cut out a mask for all three of them because I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I only used the mask for the hippo and I'm using full sticky post-it note for that mask. I'm using the same VersaFine Black Onyx ink and I'm going to emboss it with clear embossing powder as well, taking my heat gun to it. I'm cutting a lot of this out just to save time. And now I'm just extending that balloon down with a uh, micro pen. Again pulling out these markers and a little swatch to swatch them off to decide on colors. I have a acrylic block there and my water pen and I added the blue to the acrylic block and now I'm using the water pen to spread the water around because I didn't want it very dark. I wanted it very light for the sky. And here at the end um, you'll see that I pull out the large chisel brush. I should have used that throughout most of it, but had forgotten. So here's where I pull it out and fill it with my water and then go ahead and spread out some of that sky. Just wiping it off on a paper towel. And if you get too much, just dab it up with your paper towel. So I wanna quickly dry this before moving on to the next colors. And for the hippo, I'm doing the same thing. I'm putting the color directly where I want it to be the darkest. and the places that I want it to be a little bit lighter, being that I don't have a lighter gray, I'm just put marking it off on the acrylic block and then using my water pen to pick it up and put it down on my hippo. And here I wanted him to be slightly darker, so I'm just taking my marker directly to it and again, pulling it out with some of the water. I do the exact same thing with the giraffe and the fox. I did not have the lighter color, so I just used the exact same color like I did with the gray, put it off on the acrylic block and then picked it up and then it gives you the lighter color that you're looking for. And if you get too much on there, just dab it up, add a little water, dab it up. Super simple. The giraffe, I'm going with more of that burnt sienna look. It's got an orange undertone to it. And then I'll use the lighter parts for his spots. I did three little cards. This was so relaxing to just color and play with them and these markers are really fun to work with. Like I said, there will be a link down in the description box if you're interested. So I'm here, I'm adding a little pink to their cheeks and their ears. And then this red is absolutely gorgeous. Look how dark that comes out. I'm adding that to my balloon. I'll go back with a white gel pen here in a minute and add a little highlight to the balloon. Again, taking my heat gun to it because I don't wanna smudge it now that I'm done with it. And now I'm adding it to a card base, added a little twine and a couple of the Nouveau Crystal Drops to it. 
that's all there was to it. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, like I mentioned earlier, please leave me a comment and check out the description box for more information. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.